The Sooners win a wild one here in Waco. I'm Barry Trammell along with OU writer Brooke Pryor. We are at McLean Stadium. We're on Saturday night. The third ranked Sooners survive Baylor 49 41. And Brooke, it was a wild one. Sooners run wild, but Baylor had much success in the passing game. Exactly. The Sooners were running wild. The Baylor Bears were passing wild. Zach Smith, who a week ago only completed, I believe, 12 of 34 passes against Duke, had 463 passing yards tonight, had just ran all over, well, passed all over OU in a way that I don't think OU expected. Mike Stoops said afterwards that they did some things that they didn't expect, that they didn't see from game film. I think it really took the Sooners by surprise. Well, the uh, Sooners get up 28-10 early, uh, look like they're going to win going away. Then Baylor uh, comes back and takes a, a surprising lead. Then the Sooners break away. Three straight touchdowns, three straight 75-yard drives, almost all on the ground. Abdul Adams ran wild. Then in the fourth quarter, Trey Sermon, hadn't even played through three quarters, comes on, rushes for 157 yards in the fourth quarter, and is sort of becoming this team's closer. Same way on a smaller scale at Ohio State, he comes in and wears down the defense. Exactly. We kind of wondered how Lincoln Riley would continue to manage the running backs, and I think what we saw tonight is something that we're going to see more often, starting out with Abdul Adams, mixing him with Marcellia Sutton, and then, like you said, closing with Trey Sermon. The biggest surprise, although I don't know if it's really a surprise, we don't see Rodney Anderson tonight, but the way Abdul Adams and Marcellia Sutton played early really carried the Sooners through. Get up, uh, Sooners up 49-31. Look like they're going to win going away. Uh, midway through the uh, fourth quarter, and then let Baylor come back, score 10 points, then recover an onside kick, sort of scare the daylights out of the Sooners, but a big sack at the end of the game. Uh, Oboe gets uh, Zach Smith, Caleb C uh, Kelly recovers the fumble, Sooners survive, but that secondary is a concern. Exactly, and an even bigger concern is that Jordan Thomas went out with what looked like a right foot ankle injury. He didn't play during the onside kick, and in that last Baylor drive on the on the training table instead, uh, getting some ice on that. He is the most experienced of OU's quarterbacks. He did get burned quite frequently tonight. He's responsible for giving up the 71-yard touchdown and the 72-yard touchdown. But you still, it's tough to replace that leadership afterwards. Neither Mike Stoops nor Lincoln Riley really had an update on his status, only saying that they were being optimistic and positive, which you never really know what that means until they get the x-rays back. But that's got to be a concern for a secondary that's already had a lot of depth issues with Will Johnson going out and Robert Barnes going out in safety positions. They're going to have to find something to, to fill in the holes during the bye week before they come back. Well, let's go to the OU locker room, see what the Sooners had to say. All right, uh, quite a ball game tonight. Um, you know, we knew coming in this was going to be a, a, a good atmosphere. Um, you know, first conference game. Uh, Coach Rule's doing a tremendous job. Give them a lot of credit tonight. I thought their kids played really, really well. Um, you know, we're, we're very, very excited about the win. Uh, that was probably the biggest message to our guys in the locker room. Uh, winning's hard, you know, and you can't, you can't, you can't take it for granted. And we're, we're damn sure not too good to appreciate it. And uh, so we got to do a lot of things better. We got to, we got to coach better. We got to play better on all three sides of the ball. Uh, we had some critical mistakes tonight that, that let that game get close. And uh, so we've got to do a lot better, uh, but, but we will. You know, it's, it's game four. We've got a lot of room for improvement. Um, and going into this bye week, hopefully we can get a couple of guys back healthy, make some strides on, on all three sides of the ball, um, and be ready to play when we get back home against Iowa State. Lincoln, you, you get behind, you Lincoln, you get behind at that point. So Lincoln, you went heavy with the run game in the fourth quarter, especially with Trey coming out of heavy play. What was the key to getting that thing going, and specifically Trey? Yeah, and Trey ran well. Uh, I didn't do a good job, especially in the – we hit a lot of big plays in the first quarter. Um, I didn't do a very good job in the second quarter. I, I got a little impatient. Um, didn't put our guys in a great, in a great position. They made some adjustments defensively, and I, it took me too long to, to catch up. So I got to do better. We we ran it well the second half. You know, we moved them up front. Trey was running well. You know, running through a lot of tackles, and really, you know, we really stopped ourselves the second half. We fumbled on the Marquise Brown first down catch, and then uh, I think all, every other drive was stopped by penalties. You know, we and had a chance, obviously, to ice it. You know, if we don't get that last hole, the game's basically over. So, you know, we we moved it well, but still, way too many penalties, and, and got to do a better job. Lincoln, you get behind, and then your team responded and enough points to win the game. Talk about that point right there, and maybe what your team showed you. Yeah, no, you got to have perseverance. You know, you can't expect that everyone's going to be a blowout. Uh, you know, you're going to have tight games like that. And this is a good conference. It's a good league. And it's a good opponent. I told people all week. 
are getting a lot of guys back. They're getting better and better. You know, uh, this is going to be a tough game. And uh, so you got to hang in there. you got to keep swinging. And our guys did that made enough plays to win. Was it, your plan coming in to use, was it your plan coming in to use Sermon in the only in the fourth quarter, or did the game dictate nah, the just, just got the flow of the game. And something in your gut told you to go with it? Yeah, we, we felt like uh, it was time to turn him loose. Lincoln, you had 21 points on just seven plays to start the game. Could that, is that something that can kind of I'm lead you into kind of a, a sense of, a wall or you know that you're playing better than maybe you really are. Oh, it could if it if it does, and we're not we're not the team that we want to be. Lincoln, you, you, gave, you guys gave up 463 passing yards. What was Baylor doing differently than some of the other teams? They just they threw and caught the ball well. Um, we were we were just our pass defense was just inconsistent the whole night. Sometimes it was the rush not getting there. A couple of busted coverages by the backers. A couple of plays in the secondary were really. I thought that times just trying too hard to make a play and coming out of their assignment. Um, and then look, give the Baylor guys credit. I mean, the guy made some unreal throws. They made some incredible catches. Um, so you know, we, we got to play better there. Baker took two, four, just really not illegal, but just mm -hmm. big hits. Did that impact you at any point in play call? No, no. Lincoln, how far y'all away from being a great team? I don't know how you define it. We still got a ways to go. You know, we're, we're, we're still too inconsistent. Our, our trust level right now as far as doing our job, we, we've got good intentions, but we, we, we veer off on our own too much right now. And uh, so we got to do a bit better job of that. We got to, you know, I think we're all still kind of learning about our team too, playing a lot of new guys, a lot of different guys. So coaching-wise, trying to, you know, do a great job of putting them in the best position to make plays. So I think, I mean, we're a work in progress. You know, we're not, uh, we said after a while, State, everybody's going to want to anoint us. We, we got a long ways to go, but we've shown the ability around here to improve a lot as seasons go on. And uh, we're confident we're going to do that again. Disappointed in uh, just, just not being able to make enough plays. Uh, you know, they obviously came in and, and opened it up. Uh, they wanted to be in a lot of spread formations and, and attack us, you know, in the passing game, and, and they did a they did a good job. We just uh, thought they made some, you know, great contested plays. Uh, we obviously didn't make, you know, enough on our end, and, and let them hang around. And you know, you get out of there when it's, you know, 49-34. If we finish that drive, get another penalty, um, they get two more possessions and, and go down, you know, scoring one, and, and we have to hold them on the next. So. Uh, just, just overall, our execution wasn't very good. Um, you know, the, the coverage at times was good. I thought they made some, you know, some great plays. We missed, you know, we're, our secondary is so thin right now. Um, you know, we got to get some guys back. Uh, it's going to be critical for us. Uh, so, you know, it's it was a little different game plan than what we'd seen going in, uh, but you know, still. Uh, should have been able to control it, you know, better than we did tonight. I didn't think our rush, you know, overall needs to be better, and and coverage certainly needs to better so it be better so it all kind of works together. Mike, you talked about their team speed and receiver before yeah, the game. We we knew they had, you know, they had go-to guys. Those two terrific players. So it's hard know. to corral it. I mean, you know. And Zach, I thought that quarterback was, you know, good a year ago. I knew he could throw. So they have enough, you know, they have weapons. Uh, you know, why they hadn't played like that, you know, I, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. They've got a lot of guys back. But, you know, their, their spread sets were good. I thought their, the kid, Zach Smith, threw the ball well, you know, most of the night. And uh, we could never, you know, really get, you know, I guess our third down package, when, you know, was good, uh, getting our pressures. They made it hard for us to get our dime package on the field. We're going to have to obviously evolve to more of that. If people are going to spread us out like that, we've got to have more flexibility in our defense. And, you know, but, you know, getting six DBs that we can really count on right now until we get some guys back is, is hurting us in the secondary. You're good. You're, you're good against the run. You're good against their screen game. Uh, as dominant as you were against the run game, is it just kind of figuring out a way to get more pass rush out of those guys? It always, I mean, that's that's the name of the game, and uh, you know we're in a four-man front, so people can't say we, you know, we're we're getting in a four-man front. We we're trying. I mean, uh, you know, I thought our our blitz game was, you know, we got a lot of guys free in, in our pressure packages. Uh, just, you know, you can't you can't do that. So we got to find ways to be better at it, 
and, and still complicate the, you know, the quarterback's reads. And so many ebbs and flows to it. You, come out, you end up winning the game and you're running the ball a bunch in the second half. But talk about how crazy this game was. Um, up and down for us offensively. Uh, shot ourselves in the foot too much. Um, wasn't my best game, but you know I, I don't think any of the guys would say the same for the first half. You know, we, we established the line of scrimmage second half and we're able to run the ball well, uh, so I didn't even need to throw. And, and that's that's good for me, but um, we need to play like that, you know, physical like that from the get-go. And I, and I think once we settled in and, and realized that you, know, you can't take anybody lightly, uh, I think we would play better. You start out, I mean, three touchdowns on seven plays. How much did, did that maybe give the offense maybe a false sense of success early? Yeah, I, I think I think it was a good reality check for us. Um, and, and it's we, we say it all the time around here, all gas, no brakes. And so you can never let your foot off the pedal, especially playing a team like that. But, you know, they can score in a second. I mean, it doesn't matter their record or anything. It's, it's still a high-powered offense that Baylor's had for a while. And so um, you, can, you can never take your foot off the gas. And, and so I think it, for us, it's just about it doesn't matter who we're playing, what the score is, down distance, you got to go do your job at a high level. So I'd say that's the most disappointing thing for us today. Uh, tonight was was just not not being consistent enough. Hey, can you talk about the sequence with the unsportsmanlike uh, conduct foul and then the very next play is on the touchdown to Jack? Uh, yeah, I just can't get caught up in the you know the hoopla. Um, emotional player, um, but you know, there's got to be a line drawn. Um, so that's that's on me, especially as a, as a team captain. But you know, it's it's all about how you respond. Yeah, I'd say it's the same thing about how we responded after. 99 yard touchdown from a duel. Right? We responded right after the A score with that. And so it, it's about how you respond, you know, taking the momentum and, you know, taking it away from them. Talk about that play, though. The Nets wide open. That was a, it's a great, pretty neat thing. Yeah, that's a great game plan. Uh, you know, we saw something that we liked and uh, just well executed. We ran it out right and I think, um, executed well on the outside and, and up front. Great protection. So it allowed me to just put it out there for him and he made, made the rest easy. What was hey, Trey Sermon doing? In this game and and takes complete control in that fourth quarter. How big was the strength coming in for you guys? He's, uh, he's a fantastic player. Uh, I think just the way he, how physical he is, um, not just, you know, how special he is, but especially the point in the game that he came in and took over. Um, you know, at, at that point in time, you, you wear a defense down in the run game. And we had been doing that, but for him to come in, fresh legs, and you know, really break a lot of tackles and make plays, um, he had, we, we blocked him. We blocked well, but he also was breaking a lot of tackles, and that's that's something that he's why he's so special. Um, it takes a lot more than just one guy to bring him down. Baker, what point did you realize guys like Trey and CD would be people you could trust to make plays when you needed them to? Um, I think just from when they got on the campus. So Trey was here a little earlier, and he graduated early, so we got to see him how he worked out and and you know how he practiced and carried himself, and so I think just. Being able to count on them, like you said, it, it comes when, although when you're really put in work and it sucks during the off season, you, you see what you're made of. And so with CD, when he first stepped onto campus, it was doing the workouts, and then also with just the players and you know the voluntary seven on seven stuff. Him just you know making plays just routinely, and so you, you see it as guys, and you gain respect for them. So when the lights come on, you just expect it to be the same thing. Yeah, um, just run how we go. Talk about that one-two punch you, you have with that duel because he kind of starts it, sets him up, and then you knock him down there in the second half. Uh, really, we just work well together, just play to head, good combination. We both have really different abilities, but we're very great guys. You like coming in the second half there and being able to pound, I guess? Uh, yeah, I just like coming in and just trying to help the team make the biggest impact as I can. How do you keep your, your head in the game when you're not getting carries for, for three quarters and all of a sudden you're asked to carry the kind of load that you carried before? Um, really, I just stay locked in the game because you never know when your time is ready. Are you the type of player who embraces these, these tough situations? I mean, that's now twice. You've played well late on the road. Uh, yeah, I love it. I love it when our back's against the wall, and you just got to keep pounding. Do you thrive in a road environment? Are you, is it a different mindset for you at home versus being on the road? Well, the mindset is pretty much the same, but I just love to just go into other people's place and just play as well as I can. Were you surprised at all at the play call on third and eight that you got the ball? That's not generally a little think that you'd run the ball right there. Um, no, I wasn't really too surprised. I know that we have a lot of confidence in our run game ability. Really. What was it like running behind that line there in the second half? It seemed like there were some pretty big holes to be able to run through. Uh, it was great. We have the best offensive line in the country, and I just love running behind them. What did you think of Abdul's 99-yarder? Uh, 
man. It was amazing. Just that speed, breaking away, and just keeping it going. It was great. You guys can survive a scare on the road here. Is it a good time for a bye week for you all? Um, yeah, just to really look over um, all our mistakes and really just kind of just kind of like fix it and just keep it, keep it moving. Did you pick up the bow after the touchdowns? Hmm? The bow after the touchdowns, is that, is that kind of your thing? Yeah, that's my go-to move. <laughs> Why is that your go-to move? Where'd you pick that up from? Um, I don't know, just after my very first touchdown, I was just kind of feeling it. <laughs> What's with the dusting off first, though? Uh, some some we call it just wipe me down. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, Thanks, What's going through your mind on that 99-yard touchdown run? Man, you know, when I saw the hole open, you know, I just hit it, and I, I saw that I had one man to beat, which was the safety. Made him miss another. It was just go the distance then. So once you got free, did you had a pretty good idea that you could make it? Or? Yeah, I feel it. I felt it, you know, because the offseason work with Smitty, man, just paid <laughs> off. Talk about the one two punch you and Trey have together. Uh, you know, it's just it's special plan with all the backs that we have. You know, we all have a good relationship, and that we know that when everyone on the field, or whoever get their shot, you know, we, they'll be ready. What is it about Trey that allows him to be so effective late in games? Uh, you know, off the field, he's also focused too, like in film study. You know, just taking down all the little things just to, for him to become a better football player overall. What effect do you think all the penalties had on the offense tonight? Um, you know, we definitely have to correct those. We want, we want to go back to practice and, you know, throw them out. We can uh, definitely fix the things that, you know, we got in trouble on. So we're going to go back. Did you survive with a win? Yeah, it definitely feels good to just come out with a W. You know, Coach Riley came in, you know, saying that conference play, you know, everybody was going to be gunning for us. They want to treat us like they're a Super Bowl. And, you know, that was the case tonight. In the second quarter, the offense kind of stalled a little bit. You come out in the third and sort of shoot yourselves in the foot a couple times, but did you still feel good there early in the second half about what you were doing offensively? You know, st still felt good. You know, we had to change up our game plan, but you know, still felt good coming in the second half. You know, we just had to adjust some things and then we knew we could just come out hard, play hard, that, you know, we could come out in the W. Probably never want to be in that spot, but is it good to have that kind of adversity and be able to answer back and respond and know, now know that you guys have that in you? Um, you know, sometimes it is, but you know, whatever way, you know, possible, we can come out with the W, and I'll take it. What were you thinking there in the last few seconds of the game when they recover the onside kick and sort of up to your defense to, to make a play and, and slow them down? I, to be honest, I wasn't ready at all. You know, I got faith in our defense, you know. Every day I practice, we practice hard. So, you know, I knew when it came down to a situation like that, we was going to come through. Are you able to make that 99-yard run last year? I do, I, I believe I could have. I believe I do believe I could have. But you know, off season with Smitty, you know, just to get all those months with him, that definitely paid off. Did you say anything to Jeff after uh, that, or did Jeff say anything to you? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. We just <laughs> went on, went on about the game. Now the Sooners get a Saturday off. They're back in action, October seventh against Iowa State. Looks like a, a bye week is just what this team needs. Exactly. That's what Baker Mayfield said. You know, it's not just that this bye week is happening before the rest of the conference play. It's that it's happening after a game like this, after a game when it seemed like OU was going to be in control early, and then things got out of control very quickly. They need to regroup, they need to find some answers, and they need a weekend off. Well, stay tuned for further OU football coverage here on News OK and every day in the Oklahoma.